students can be cruel to each other. As educators, it is of the first importance to stand in the breach between the student aggressor bully and the student victim. There are numerous examples of students being bullied with terrible results. Laws against bullying have been enacted to try and protect vulnerable students. Bullying in any form is unacceptable, but once in a great while, the victim has the last laugh. (laughs) You can't make this stuff up. Today's story will cause you to change your perspective about a mundane everyday item. The oh-so-humble and easily refillable soap dispenser in the public restroom. You didn't realize you had a perspective on a refillable soap dispenser? Well, just hang around. And now for today's story. One day after school, one of my teachers pokes her head in my office and asks if she can talk to me. Mrs. Smith is a very experienced teacher and rarely asks for anything. She says she has a particular disciplinary problem and wants my guidance on how to handle it. Since Mrs. Smith has been in education even longer than myself, I was intrigued but also a little anxious. If Mrs. Smith needed my help, chances were this was something out of the norm. And I was right. I welcomed her in. She launched into her story. I sensed what she was about to tell me was on some level entertaining to her, but ever the professional, she was trying not to be too amused. She said little Susie was a student in her class. Little Susie was a student some might say came from the wrong side of the tracks. She was fearless, aggressive, street smart, and almost six feet tall. Also, her parents had a well-deserved reputation for being unpleasant. They seemed to thrive on confrontation. I insisted on attending all meetings when they were involved. Mrs. Smith said some of the girls, a clique composed mostly of cheerleader types and their friends, had been harassing little Susie and making fun of her. It turns out they had been giving her grief about her hygiene for some unknown reason since the beginning of the year. Then one of them witnessed her committing the unpardonable sin of exiting the restroom without washing her hands. It had become a criticism frenzy after that event. Mrs. Smith says she never tolerated this kind of behavior, shutting it down aggressively every time. But on this particular day, one or two of the girls would not let it go. Susie came to class that day with paint on her hands. The ringleaders of the abuse had zeroed in on this and then made disparaging comments about her history of not washing her hands and her cleanliness in general. Mrs. Smith said at some point you could sense that little Susie had lost it. She stood up, her 5 feet 11 inches towered over the other girls. The other girls had a deeply concerned look etched on their faces that said volumes. They realized a little too late they had pushed little Susie a little too far. Stepping forward into the middle of their cluster, little Susie caused them to scoot back in their desks. The feet of their metal desks made distressing noises on the tile. This seemed to add music to their tension. Then, instead of smacking them, which obviously some had expected, she started an epic dressing down. Mrs. Smith said she told Susie to sit down, But Susie ignored her. Mrs. Smith said she wanted to go get help, but was afraid to leave the room. Mrs. Smith said little Susie snarled her words at the group. Clearly, this had been building up for some time, and today was not the group's lucky day. Susie said, you bitches think you are so superior. Just because you're a cheerleader or you live in a big house, you think that makes you better than girls like me? Now you're making fun of me again because you think you are somehow cleaner than I am. You tease me every day, always harping about washing my hands. At this point, little Mary, cheerleader and chief antagonist, mean girl extraordinaire, chirps in, because we know you don't wash your hands. This elicits knowing looks and some nervous laughter from the little clique. Little Susie glares at Mary. At that moment, Mrs. Smith said she is certain little Susie's going to slap the grin off of little Mary's face. Finally, little Susie stops staring at little Mary and looks at each of the other girls in turn. So, she says, do every one of you wash your hands in the restroom every time? They all shake their heads in agreement. Well, Susie says confidently, I don't wash my hands in the restroom because I've been pissing in the soap dispenser weekly since you bitches started making fun of me. The room erupts in silence. All except for little Johnny, who had witnessed the entire altercation and was losing his mind on the floor laughing. Mrs. Smith stopped speaking then, apparently finished with her recital. I asked Mrs. Smith how she'd like to handle it. She sat there quietly, looking at me with puppy dog eyes. At that, I burst out laughing. I told Mrs. Smith I would deal with little Susie, 
and by association her most disagreeable parents. This earned me some of my favorite oatmeal cookies the next day. The next day, I spoke to little Susie. My secretary sat in on the conference as was my routine. Little Susie was a frequent flyer in my office, but she was not adversarial toward me. She had always been respectful. Susie, I say? Mrs. Smith tells me you confessed to some of your classmates that you had been urinating in this soap dispenser. Susie sits there with a devilish grin on her face. Yes, sir, that's what I told them. Pretty ingenious, huh? I stare at her a little dumbfounded. I was having enough trouble keeping it together and not laughing at the ridiculousness of the situation. But to brag about it to the principal? I was completely off balance. I looked at her. I said, what? Yes, that's what I told them, she says. It shut them up too. Susie, I said, you peed in the soap? Oh, hell no, principal. Language. Oh, heck no, principal. I came up with that on the spot. Pretty smart, huh? Brilliant, I think to myself. Little Susie looks at me with pleading eyes. Please don't tell them. Please. Susie, I can't make that promise. But I'll tell you this. If you don't bring it up, and if no one else brings it up, I won't bring it up. Deal, she says. Now get back to class, Susie. She flashes me a big smile and dances out of the office. The next day, I had maintenance replace all the soap dispensers with the ones that lock. You can't make this stuff up.